Chandu, the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The makers of White King Granulated Soap present for your enjoyment tonight and every weekday evening at this time, Chandu, the magician. Listen, and you will travel to strange lands. You will thrill to high adventure, romance, mystery. The magic of Cairo and Baghdad in the East with their strange secrets and mysterious ways will hold you spellbound. You will come to love this drama as it is played against a backdrop of oriental color and intrigue. And just as you will like our story, so will you like the soap we make. White King Granulated Soap. It is so easy on hands that thousands and thousands of ladies say it's just like magic. There are many tales told on the radio, but only one, Chandu. There are many soaps on your grocer's counters, but none like White King. You will love White King granulated soap. And when you buy White King tomorrow, save the box top and tell your friends to save White King box tops too. Now... Let the play begin. Frank Chandler, known in the Far East as Chandu, his sister Dorothy Regent and her two children have incurred the hatred of a man they have seen but once as a malevolent figure in a crystal ball. He is known to them only as Roxor. In Alexandria, Egypt, they were locked in an upper room in a native bazaar by a ruffian in Roxor's service. Later, Yusuf, an Arab known to Chandler, brought them native dress with which to disguise themselves and showed them a secret means of escape. But they were followed and stepped into a dark, narrow alley to elude pursuit. When they reached the other end of the alley, Dorothy Regent had disappeared. Now, a few hours later, Bob and Betty are in an inner room in the house of Yusuf. Chandu, the magician. <laughs> oh, look, Betty, what good does it do to cry? It was all my fault. Oh, how could it be? Because I was so scared, that's why. I was afraid to walk down that dark alley alone, so I made Uncle Frank come with me. If I'd have gone right behind Mother, I'd have seen what had happened to her. I still don't see how anything could have happened to her in that little time. You and Uncle Frank weren't more than a couple of hundred feet behind her. But it was so dark, and she had on those black Arab clothes. Uncle Frank and I thought she'd be with you when we got there. Oh, I wish we didn't have to just sit here and do nothing. I bet you could, if you didn't have to stay here with me like a babysitter or something. Well, you certainly can't blame Uncle Frank for not wanting something to happen to you, too. I wish it had happened to me instead of Mother. Oh, that'd be a big help. Anyway, I do have to stay here with you. But Uncle Frank will be back pretty soon, and Mother, too, I bet. Oh, I hope so. Bob, Uncle Frank's kind of funny, isn't he? Uh, how do you mean funny? Well... Not mysterious, exactly, but... Sure, I know. Most of the time, he's just like anybody's uncle, and then all of a sudden, he kind of goes away, and you say something to him, and he doesn't answer. Or else he says we wouldn't understand. Like how he got into our house that first night with everything locked up. Yeah. I sure wish I knew how he did that. Even if it was only a gag, I never heard of anybody else that could do it. Well, we never knew anybody before that had studied magic, or whatever you call it, in India. It makes me shiver sometimes. I like him, though, don't you? Oh, sure. I wonder how he happened to go to India in the first place. I never thought of that. Mother must know. No, she doesn't. I asked her. All she knows is that he went to Europe on some kind of business about 15 years ago. And then he wrote to her and said he was going to India. And she never heard a word from him for years and years. You know what I think? No, what? I think he knows about a lot of those things Daddy invented or discovered. And that's not all. Uncle Frank saw Dad over here in Egypt. Oh, <gasps> what? What makes you think that? Well, don't you remember? When Yusuf came into the place over the rug shop, he started to say something about Uncle Frank knowing what Dad was doing. And Uncle Frank shut him up like a clam. That's right, Bob. And besides, he wouldn't be so worried about that stuff of Daddy's that was stolen from our house if he didn't know what it was. Hey, come away from those windows. Oh, it's so stuffy in here. I'm just going to pull the curtain. 
curtains back and open the shutters. No, you don't. Oh, now, Bob, there's nothing out there but the garden. I don't care. Uncle Frank closed the shutters himself. You let him alone. Oh. Hey. Hey, there's somebody coming up the stairs. Oh, maybe it's Uncle Frank and Mother. Uncle Frank, did you find her? Not yet, Betty. Oh, dear. I went back all through that alley myself. But, Uncle Frank, we knew she wasn't there. Well, there were just blank walls on each side, weren't there? No, there are a couple of doors, but they were locked. They looked as if they hadn't been opened for years. Anyway, Mother wouldn't go in any place. Well, what's Yusuf doing all this time? Well, he's looking for your mother, too. Two of his men just came in downstairs. They've searched the neighborhood as thoroughly as they can without calling in the police. Well, why don't we call them? I told you. These old buildings are like rabbit warrens with all sorts of hidden rooms. They'd never find your mother if the Arabs want to hide her. Besides, it might be worse for her if we called in the police. But what are we going to do? That's what I came up here to tell you. There's one thing I can... There's someone on the balcony. I thought so. Come in here. I see smart. Come on, Tom. What do you want? Who are you? You see, Bob, if you'd let me open the shutters, we'd have known he was out there. Answer me, Raggio. What were you doing on the balcony? Nothing. I, I did nothing. I, I will go now. You'll stay right here until I find out what you came for. As you say, it is good to wait in beautiful room to look at beautiful young lady. How would you like a punch in the nose? Hold it, Bob. I'm sure I can make him tell why he came here. Uncle Frank, what are you going to... Hush, Betty. Now, my friend who lurks on balconies, you shall see what it means to oppose Chandu. Chandu! Look down. Look there, between your feet. What do you see? Oh, a snake! A viper! See? There is another. No. And another. No. And another. No. See how they rise about your feet. No. Don't be afraid, Betty. The snakes won't harm you. It's this jackal here they want. I beg you, take them away. Do not let them come closer. You better give with what you came here for. Tell me. Uh, yes, yes, I will tell everything, everything. Only take these snakes away. Very well. The snakes are gone. Look about you. Now, why did you come here? Yeah, make it snappy. Uh, the vipers are gone. Perhaps I only think I see them. I have heard of Chandu, but perhaps... Uh... So that's it. Very well. Look. You see the knife in the leather case on the table? I will count three. If by then you have not told me the name of the man who sent you here, that knife will fly from its case and bury itself in your heart. I have spoken. One, two... Hey, Roxor! Roxor? Oh, Uncle Frank! I thought so. Now sit down on the couch behind you. Hey. Tell me everything you know. Where is this Roxor? Is he in Alexandria? Let him tell it, Bob. Go on, Ragil. My master Roxor is in secret place. I know not where. Remember, nothing but the truth. No vipers, no knives. I tell truth! <laughs> Roxor, send messenger from shop of Ben Ali. Where is Ben Ali? Hassan, kill him. I was afraid of that. That's just what Yusuf said. The princess said to Roxor, she help you, not him. My master is mad with anger. I, you have not seen Roxor when he is so like the anger of Allah himself. Get on with it. My master has great plan. Great secret plan. No one will ever stand in his way. He has told me, not armies of soldiers, not Chandu. I, you see, he said your name, not Chandu. Why did you come here? I come because I am sent. I am not told young lady is protected by Chandu. You mean me? What did I tell you, Betty? Go on, Ragion. Where is Roxor now? Oh, he did not come here. He stayed in secret place far away. Ah, oh, nuts. We know he was in Egypt because we saw him talking to the princess in the crystal. Bob, is Roxor in Egypt now? Sometime he go to Mazra. Where's Mazra? What do you call Cairo? But not many times. Most times Roxor is in secret place far away. I'll get to the point. Why did you come here? Chandu... Chandu, you will not say I have told you. No, 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 of course not. I am sent to take away young lady. 
Then you will go to search for her, Chandu. While you are gone, Rox will send... No! No, Shakira! She was a knife! Let him go. Yusuf's servants will catch him. There was another man out on the balcony. What was? The man who threw the knife. Someone else was sent to watch this fellow. And when he got here and heard what he was saying, he threw that knife at him. He must have seen it coming. He did. He said Sakina. That's Arabic for knife. Yeah. Here it is. I wouldn't like to be in his shoes, even if Yusuf's servants don't catch him. No, poor devil. He hasn't a chance. And the first one of Roxor's men who sees him... Oh, this is a terrible place. And we still don't know where Mother is. Uncle Frank, do something. Why don't you? I'm going to. Right now. Oh, what was it you were going to tell us just before you saw that guy out there in the balcony? This. I'm going out and find your mother by ways you must never ask. That's why I didn't change into my own clothes from these Arab things. Remember, never ask me how I found her. We won't. But you make me shiver. Don't be afraid, Betty Lou. Oh, you, sir. I bring you word of your sister, Chandu. Oh, where is she? Why didn't you bring her with you? Wait. What have you to tell me, brother of the Lotus? This is not Roxor's work. Somebody else took Mother away? Ah, well, young Effendi, some low-class Arabs saw her walking through the alley. They opened the door, they take her inside. But I looked at those doors myself. It was not one of the doors in the alley, or Chandu. It was in the corner of the wall. How do you know this, Yusuf? I had the men. I've done what was necessary to make them speak. I see. Where is Mother? Where is she now? Your brave Mother went with them quietly, see. Perhaps she thought to keep her eyes from you. Oh, dear. Poor mother. They thought to take her to the slave market, but your mother was not only brave, she was wise. Get on with it, Yusuf. What has happened to my sister? The men were deceived by her quietness. When they turned away for one moment, she went quickly away into the street. Boy, you have to hand it to mother, Uncle Frank. She put one over on him, all right. How do you like that? But she won't know where to find us. Yusuf, where is she? Where is she now? Only Allah knows. We pause before we say good evening to suggest that you and your family listen to Chandu every weekday evening at this time. Travel with us to strange places and faraway lands and thrill with Dorothy Region and her children, Betty and Bob, as they're plunged into the mystery and intrigue of Egypt and the Near East. And, of course, we'd like to have you use the soap we make. White King Granulated Soap. You'll love White King. Anything that can be washed may be washed with White King. With safety to fabrics and colors, kindness to your lovely hands. The only hands you'll ever have. So on your radio, remember Chandu the Magician every weekday evening at this time. And at your grocer's, remember White King Granulated Soap. No other soap is like it. You'll say no other soap has ever done your work so well. Good night. Chandu the Magician is presented for your enjoyment every weekday evening. Frank Chandler is played by Tom Collins. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu the Magician. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.